The Denver Broncos trade down in round one to acquire a massive mock draft Monday on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Broncos country, it is time for our Mock Draft Monday. We're utilizing Pro Football Network's Mock Draft Simulator, where we're in control here all seven rounds. We're going to break it all down in terms of what options pop up for the Denver Broncos in the first round overall. We'll analyze maybe some trades that get brought our way, and we'll have an idea as to where the Broncos are at. So let's take a look here at the draft. The Broncos on the clock, pick number 12. You already get three trade offers off the bat here on Pro Football Network's Mock Draft Simulator, the Tennessee Titans, they are wanting picks number 12 for Denver, pick number 76 in exchange for pick 23, pick number 38, and a 2025 first-round pick for the Titans. I mean, Sarah, we do have to talk about this. Obviously, Denver being on the clock here, is this something we want to entertain, or is there something else that maybe we need to take a look at? Here? Because there are some quarterbacks off the board here for the this entire situation. Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, and obviously J.J. McCarthy, number seven to the Minnesota Vikings who have traded up. Denver does have the opportunity to take a quarterback here, but is this something we should entertain? I think anytime you get an offer for a future first round pick, especially from a team where like the Titans, who kind of has an uncertain quarterback situation, that's something that would be really tough to turn down, especially because in that offer right there, you're getting you're only moving down, you know, 11 spots. You also add that second round pick. You do have to give up your third, but it gives you two picks kind of close together in rounds one and two. I don't hate that scenario. If the Broncos like both Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr., they like those guys to a you know pretty similar level or an equal level, I think that is something that I would definitely look into doing. Okay, so should we accept this trade or should we reject it? I, you know what? Let's 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 do some. Let's get crazy. Let's accept it for the sake. Okay. You know what? Mock draft Monday. Let's get crazy. <laughs> we haven't looked at a scenario like this where you get a future first. Let's do it. All right. So the Broncos they get pick number twenty three, pick number thirty eight, and a twenty twenty five first rounder from the Titans in exchange for picks number twelve. And pick 76. We are accepting this trade. And as the Broncos are now on the clock, we are going to stay firm with where we are at in terms of this pick here. Denver on the clock. Options here, Sarah. Taking a look at quarterback. Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr., they are available. Are we going quarterback here with this pick? Because Denver does acquire, obviously, additional capital here with the 38th pick, which will be up next here for this team. Should we go QB? I think you've got to go with QB if that's the plan. I mean, and we kind of think that's the plan at, at some point or another, whether it's trading up, staying at 12 or trading down, we kind of feel like quarterback is the most likely option here. So we, I, I like the, I like the option as a at quarterback in this you know situation here, picking 23rd, you've now got a second round draft choice. This gives you flexibility. It allows you to do what we've been talking about, really building around that QB going forward. So I'm all for going for quarterback. The question is, do you go Bo Nix or Michael Penix here? We know Penix just recently visited the Broncos facility. We assume Bo Nix will at some point or potentially has already, and we just don't know about it. But maybe, Cody, I mean, I don't know. Is there a competition between those two guys, or do you still feel like the, the hype is more leaning towards Bo Nix? My personal preference would be Bo Nix in this situation over Michael Penix Jr. I think there's a lot of buzz around that in terms of maybe what is Sean Payton's looking for from how a quarterback operates his offense. I'm leaning Bo here. Where are you at? I got, I, I I'm okay with that. You know, I like okay. the upside of Penix as well, but I'm, I'm okay with, I, I'd be okay with Bo Nix over Penix if the Broncos went that direction as well. Okay. So the Broncos with this pick will take Bo Nix 23rd overall in the 2024 NFL draft in this mock draft simulation. Their next pick coming up is pick number 38. So let's take a look here. Broncos back into round two. They have all the opportunities to make some noise here. Pick number 38. Let's take a look at the best players that are available right now when we talk about the big board overall. Byron Murphy, the 22nd player on the overall mock draft board, still available. You have safety Tyler Newbin out of Minnesota. I don't think Denver needs to go there. Darius Robinson, edge rusher out of Missouri. Lad McConkey, wide receiver out of Georgia. Tavondre Sweat, defensive tackle out of Texas. You have the Texas two-step between Byron Murphy and Tavondre Sweat. I'm trying to feel like, where should we look at here? Like, is there a position that we need to take a look at for Denver specifically 
when we make this pick here in round number two? Well, you and I have talked about a couple of different things. We've talked about the fact that the defensive line needs to continue to be upgraded and that the Broncos need to add bodies there, not just bodies, but they need to add playmakers on the defensive line. But we've also discussed this idea of, hey, you draft a quarterback, go out and support that pick right away, right? And so there's, I see Troy Franklin was off the board, number 33 overall to the Carolina Panthers. That would be so much fun to be able to pair him up with Bo Nix, but it's not in the cards. And I think looking at this, you know, Malachi Corley still available. Lad McConkey still available. The tackle position is not necessarily uh, looking great right here. Kingsley Suamatea from BYU went earlier in this situation. Jordan Morgan has already come off the board. Where do you think in this one, Cody? I particularly am leaning towards defensive line with Byron Murphy still sitting there, the 22nd overall player on the PFN big board and a first round player on most big boards that I've read about. I think Byron Murphy from Texas would be a home run selection here at number 38 for the Broncos. For some reason, he slid in this mock draft. I'm on board with taking him, Sarah. I think that's what Denver needs. Obviously, you combine him and Malcolm Roach together. Denver might have an opportunity to create more one-on-ones on the outside for Jonathan Cooper, for Baron Browning, for Nick Benito in those rotational roles. And you get a presence that can anchor inside the A and the B gaps, stop the run there, and potentially rush the quarterback. Byron Murphy sounds like the pick for me. So I'm going to go with that, which leaves the Broncos a little bit dry here coming up, Sarah. Their next pick after 38th overall is going to be pick number 121st overall. So let's see what options here are now on the table. The Broncos, they get Bo Nix, they get quarterback, they get a defensive tackle, two of their biggest needs in this mock draft simulation. And now they're going to be on the clock here in round number four of the NFL draft, where the opportunities for them, like you look at all the guys that are available here, top players you look at Braylon Allen running back out of Wisconsin. You look at Audric Estime out of Notre Dame. But then there's also like the argument to be made here, Sarah. Could Denver maybe double dip here at defensive line? I can't help but notice Mason Smith's name sitting there available 108th overall on the PFN big board. Uh, you know, you'll Byron Murphy. You get Mason Smith who can play a multitude of positions, not just defensive tackle, but can also play defensive end. Sarah, my, uh, my click finger is getting a little itchy here for this mock draft here. Where do you think we should go next here in this mock draft? Well, you know me. I love a good double up in the NFL draft. And so I would be all on board for Mason Smith, especially with his connection to defensive line coach Jamar Kane from their time at LSU. I think that would be a really good pickup for the Broncos. And you continue to add playmakers to that D line. I can't help but notice, though, the Tennessee running back is sitting there. There was a recent report put out there by Chris Thomas and Cody who said that he feels like there's some growing buzz that the Broncos really like Jalen Wright, the running back from Tennessee. So I would be on board with that as well. He's a guy that I think could contribute all three downs. He's somebody that the, the running back position right now for Denver, you've got two guys at the top of the depth chart, Javante Williams and Samaje P. Ryan in contract years. It gives you an opportunity to go after a playmaker for your new quarterback who's going to be getting rid of the ball quickly. And he, Sean Payton likes to throw the ball to the running back position. So if you get another threat in that phase of the game, I think that's something that you consider here as well. Well, there's also another option too. We talk about cornerback Tyree Jackson, cornerback out of Oregon is available here. And this also seems like a very appealing pick. Which direction do we go? Broncos country, Sarah Bettinger and myself, we're going to break that down here on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. Today's Locked On Broncos podcast is brought to you by our friends over there at the Game Time app. And Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier to go to the ballpark and see games that you want to see. And prices on the Game Time app, they actually go down the closer it gets to pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. So head to the ballpark today, courtesy of the Game Time app and obviously locked on Broncos. Make sure you go check out one of the games that are coming up here at Coors Field for the Rockies. Even though there's not a lot of excitement around the team, it's one of the best ballparks to go enjoy time with your friends, your family, and maybe even enjoy a cool beverage there. They have last-minute deals where you can save up to 60% off buying last-minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and other events going on in your area. Plus, they have flash deals. They have all-in pricing, which allows you to see your total up front, so you're not surprised when you go to checkout. And best of all, you get a panoramic seat view from your vantage point. Wherever you're going to sit, you get to see what the action is going to look like all inside the Game Time app. 
So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. The last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Where are the Denver Broncos going to go as we begin the fourth round of this mock draft Monday? Could it be another defensive lineman stack up the D line, running back potentially adding to the secondary? All things on the table here as we begin round four of this mock draft scenario, Cody, where we've already come away with Bo Nix at the quarterback position, got Byron Murphy, an absolute steal in the second round there, but missed out in the third round, right? The Broncos didn't have any third round picks because of the mock trade that we made with the Tennessee Titans here. So you've got two players I think can be key foundation pieces for you at critical positions going forward, especially Bo Nix at the quarterback spot in round four. What are you looking for here? Because I tend to go for you know, what's the highest upside, the highest potential return on investment in terms of this guy could potentially be a, a you know day one contributor and you didn't expect him to be sitting there on the board because that's that's maybe the highest upside that you have in round four. There's a lot of scenarios I think that you could look at with what the Broncos would be presented with in this situation. Yeah, I was telling you before we we obviously were talking about this in terms of round four. I saw Kyrie Jackson's name, and I you know for me looking at where Denver's at from a cornerback standpoint, we know that ideally internally they would like to see Damari Mathis and Riley Moss maybe emerge to take that starting job opposite of PS two. But can't help but wonder if former Alabama cornerback there, and obviously now obviously Oregon Ducks draft prospect Kyrie Jackson, who to be honest with you, Sarah, I really enjoyed watching him this past season. You know me, I watched the Ducks consistently, so. This isn't my duck bias here. I think Kyrie Jackson would be a great pick for Denver, but do we feel like cornerback is a more important position for them to take right now in this mock draft simulation, or is there somewhere else that they should go here? I mean, there's also linebacker Denver maybe needing to get a little bit more athletic there, as George Payton has said, or do you look at offense? Like, is this the poor part of the draft where you do add to the offense right now? We look at all the wide receivers that Denver does have on the roster right now. I think that their top four is solidified, I think, when you talk about roster locks overall. So would it be wise to get a wide receiver here? You look at running back, like Javante is obviously going to be in a contract here. Samaje in a contract here. Jaleel McLaughlin, the Broncos, and Sean Payton seemingly have big plans for him. So should they go offense here? Like This is where I'm really conflicted on what is best for the Broncos. I'm going to let you take all the pressure off my shoulders here in this mock draft simulation. <laughs> where are we going here in this pick? Well, you know what, Cody, I think just because I haven't done a mock draft scenario by taking him in any of these spots yet, I think I'm going to go with Jalen Wright, the running back out of Tennessee. I think that, you know, maybe some shades there of uh, Alvin Kamara, maybe just the Tennessee helmet. I don't know. That may be a little unfair to him, but certainly with his ability to contribute on all three downs, I think that gives you an option for Bo Nix to kind of have a safety valve right away in his rookie season. Well, and also gives the Broncos the opportunity right here to get the top pick in the fifth round of the NFL draft. We look at all the players that are available here. Okay, so Denver going out, they get another running back, which I think is a great move. And I think that for Tennessee running back in specific, when we're talking about Jalen Wright, one of the things we can look at is, okay, does it push somebody out? Right? I think this is where maybe like Samaj P. Ryan's roster spot would be in jeopardy if this were the move because – is Denver really going to carry four running backs on the active roster in 2024? Doesn't make a lot of sense here. So now I think we're at the part of the NFL draft in this mock draft simulation where we have an opportunity to go through and discuss, okay, hey, now is this where Denver should just load up on positions where they feel like you're going to have expiring contracts or the long-term outlook of those positions isn't necessarily fruitful going past 2024 here? And it makes, I think, the question bigger, should the Broncos here go with tight end when we look at some of the guys that are available you look at theo johnson a guy that we've selected in several mock drafts some of the simulations we've run without you know even choosing ourselves the manual simulations have had the broncos add a tight end to the mix he is available when we look at offensive players you will also look at jared wiley out of tcu who's also an option jaheen bell out of florida state and then there's also luke mccaffrey but i also feel like maybe luke mccaffrey might be able to be available a little bit later on because the Broncos will pick in nine picks from now, 145th overall. So for me, I look at that defensively. You look at linebacker Jalen Ford is still available here. He's six foot two, 240 pounds has an 8.2 RAS score. Not necessarily. I think the athletic upgrade that maybe George Payton alluding to when we talk about it, 
You look at cornerback. Is there anyone that Denver can take right now? Nobody that I'm necessarily sold on. So for me, Sarah, I am kind of itching to go Theo Johnson here, tight end out of Penn State. I wouldn't hate that at all. Big time athleticism from Theo Johnson, somebody who stood in to pass protect quite a bit, which we know that could be important in Sean Payton's offense. Just that versatility, not necessarily that you're going to have the tight end pass protecting all the time, but they did cut Chris Manhurts, who is known for his ability to run and pass block. So I would say, Cody, I would be completely on board with Theo Johnson. And in fact, even if it's if it's earlier than round five for the Broncos, when it comes to the real NFL draft, I think Theo Johnson is a really good fit for this team. All right. Well, let's go make the selection here. Theo Johnson to the Denver Broncos, 136th overall. The Broncos back on the clock here in round number five, pick number 145. So let's take a look at some of the best players available on the offensive side of the ball. Denver just went with Theo Johnson at tight end. Now it gives me the opportunity to maybe look at Luke McCaffrey here, right? Obviously, the Broncos have hosted him for a pre-draft visit, a top 30 visit. So for me, I'm looking at his speed, his production. Like he played quarterback initially coming into college, and then he transitioned to wide receiver where he had a huge impact, obviously, for Rice. You look at maybe his metrics, his RAS score, 9.43. He's a six foot one prospect there, 198 pounds. Maybe a guy you can develop here. And obviously, we all know the ties to Ed McCaffrey. I don't think you make this pick just because he's Ed McCaffrey's son, but he did have consistent production in back-to-back seasons at Rice. Adds, I think, good depth. Adds six foot one size to the uh, you know the equation here for Denver. I'm okay with Luke McCaffrey here, or should maybe we take a look at the offensive line? Do you want to get a tackle this late? Is there anybody worth really investing in in terms of developing at the tackle position? That's also another thing I think we should ponder between where we go here. Do we go receiver? Do we go offensive tackle? Well, I think you've made a great point before, Cody, and I also read it recently from Mike Kliss of Nine News in Denver, who said that the Broncos really like their undrafted tackle duo from last year of Alex Palczewski and then Demontre Jacobs as well. So I would say Luke McCaffrey is the pick here. It's a little bit of fan service, like you mentioned, Ed McCaffrey's kid, but at the same time, like, look, how many opportunities have the Broncos had to bring in the McCaffrey since Ed, and we've missed on all of them. So (laughs) all of his kids are passing us by at this point. So we got to get one of them, uh, have a legacy there in Denver. And I think he just really kind of, he kind of fits because at this stage of the draft, he's a guy who he's so tough at the catch point. Like he's so aggressive when the ball is in the air that you can't help but see a little bit of, I don't want to, I don't want to just make comparisons just to make them Cody, but little Puka Nakua there in terms of his willingness to go and get the ball in any sort of high traffic situation, maybe even just in that regard. I like Luke McCaffrey a lot as a day three pick for the Broncos. All right. Well, the Broncos 145th overall in this mock draft Monday simulation will go Luke McCaffrey. They'll have picks 147, 203, and 207 remaining in today's Locked On Broncos mock draft Monday episode. We'll get to those final three picks here on today's brand new episode of the show. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp, and a lot of us spend our lives wishing that we had more time, more time to go to the ballpark with our friends, to go enjoy experiences with our family members, and sometimes life can get in the way or things can happen that make it very difficult to us to enjoy the time that we have on our hands. But the question is, if you had more time on your hands, what would you do with it? How would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and most importantly, make it a priority and therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. I've utilized BetterHelp therapy in the past about a year and a half ago, two years ago, I signed up for BetterHelp. I got matched to a therapist within minutes who was licensed and I set up my first appointment. First appointment went great. I vibe really well with my therapist and the best part about it, you know, she gave me ideas. I deal with stress. I deal with anxiety. It's a very frustrating industry to be in sometimes. And there are a lot of things that come up like imposter syndrome. That's something I've dealt with. My therapist helped me work through that. And whatever you're going through, your therapist can help you work with that too. And if you don't vibe well with your therapist, you can switch therapists at any time at no additional cost or charge to yourself. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient. You can do it from your home. You can do it from your bed. You can do it anywhere you want that you feel like it's going to be comfortable. It's flexible. And best of all, it's suited to your schedule. So fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists, like I said, anytime at no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. As we 
Up fourth quarter action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. Denver is on the clock at 147th overall in this latest mock draft simulation, courtesy of Pro Football Network's mock draft simulator. The Broncos, so far, their picks to recap. Bo Nix, 23rd overall after trading down with the Tennessee Titans. They get Bo Nix. They get Byron Murphy in round number two after he slid there. They get Jalen Wright running back out of Tennessee at 121st overall. Then they add Theo Johnson as some weaponry to the offense there with their quarterback of the future out of Penn State. Then they add Luke McCaffrey. Now there's three picks that are remaining here for the Broncos, 147th, which is on the clock right now, 203rd and 207th overall. Real quick, we just want to say thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country. Thanks for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. Just a reminder, you can get this podcast for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. We appreciate you so much for making the show exactly what it is. All right, Sarah, we are now at the point where the Broncos, they are on the clock. You look at a wide variety of players that are available here. This is where you really try to build prospect developmental depth, right? Not necessarily someone you think is going to start, but hey, can this guy come in and maybe make some noise during training camp and maybe make a case for himself in the preseason to make the roster? Or it could be a back-end guy that maybe gets released and brought back onto the practice squad. And then there's also the chance where, hey, maybe a guy can emerge that, you know, drops so far here in the NFL draft. You're like, wait, where did this guy come from? He's a sixth or seventh round guy, and he's playing here in 2024. Denver's got a lot of opportunity here to do something here. And, and I would be remiss if we don't bring up the fact that George Payton and his history so far has indicated they've always drafted safeties in the NFL draft. This would be around the time maybe you're looking at drafting a safety. So taking a look at that position specifically, Tyke Smith out of Georgia is available. Katan Oladapo out of Oregon State's available. Missouri safety Jalen Carlisle is available. Like, are we looking somewhere here? Like, I even think Evan Williams, once again, hate to bring up the Oregon ties here. He's also a productive player as well. Should the Broncos go safety here? And if so, is there a name that you see on the board that, hey, Denver should consider here? You know what? I'm actually thinking of a position you mentioned previously with George Payton saying he wants to get a little more athletic at the linebacker spot. There's a guy that I think he's not necessarily going to go high in in – Maybe even I don't even know if he's getting drafted in most mock draft situations, Cody, but there's somebody that has had some significant ties to the Broncos. His name is Jordan McGee. He's a linebacker out of Temple. He scored really well in the RAS department. He's somebody who has a lot of good tape. I saw Daniel Jeremiah just recently tweeted about him. He's like, why are more people not talking about this guy? I think he accomplishes what you're looking for in terms, in terms of getting more athletic at the position, somebody who could play right away on special teams. If it was up to me, and you could tell me what you think, and you could go safety here as well, I would say I, I'd vote for uh, Jordan McGee here with the 147th overall pick. Okay, because he is ranked 270th on PFN's big board. And I think in this mock draft similar, to be honest with you, sir, I think he'll be available by the time the Broncos are on the clock next at 203rd overall. Is this a risk we want to take? Because I also feel like Denver should go with a safety here. Do it. I'd say do it. Uh, if you like Evan Williams, I'm on board fully. You're right, though. Jordan, I mean, George Payton, he does go after the safeties in the draft pretty heavily. And certainly we've seen a number of them work out for the Broncos. So it's going to be uh, one of those things where guys got to contribute right away on special teams as well. And if there's a safety here at the turn in round five that the Broncos could go for, I like it. I like the kid from Utah. I don't know if I, Sione Vaki, he's got the versatility, plays a little running back, plays a little safety, kind of got the playmaker gene about him. He's an interesting guy to me. I don't necessarily know that he's the most athletic, but he's a guy to me, Cody, that I feel like Sean Payton could kind of fall in love with his versatility as well. All right. I'm going to go with Evan Williams here, my friend. We'll see where, where the cards may fall here when Denver's on the clock, 203rd overall. You're going to look at the board, obviously, as it's all formulating here. I'm very curious to see what Denver has in terms of options here. They are on the clock. And when we're looking at maybe players that we have talked about here, defensively, you look at linebacker. Yeah, shoot. Your Jordan McGee is still available. You want to go here? Let's do it. Let's take him. Right. Let's take Jordan McGee. Let's get that athletic linebacker into the fold. That's kind of the right range too for the Broncos to take a linebacker. It would it would be very frustrating to me, Cody. I don't know about you, but it would be super frustrating to me if they took a linebacker with one of their top two or three selections in this draft, just because of what they invested in Drew Sanders last year. And I don't know, that just that would be really frustrating to me overall with the guys that they brought in, Cody Barton bringing back Jonas Griffith. I wouldn't like that at all. 
All right, we'll go Jordan McGee here. And, you know, maybe we could even double dip. Like Easton Gibbs, who know the Broncos, obviously linebacker out of Wyoming. They didn't have to travel very far to go watch him and to see him. They've obviously visited and have had interviews with him. Should we go double dip it, obviously a linebacker, or should we maybe take a look at another position here? Right now you see a lot of safeties. You see some corners, and you see some running backs and some tight ends still available. Obviously, the Colorado ties, Colorado State tight end, Dallin Holker, he's also available. I know that would be a fan favorite pickup late. Uh, where should we go here with the final pick in this mock draft Monday simulation? I'm interested to know. Let's let's look off the wall just for a second here. Is Tory Taylor, the punter from Iowa, is he still available? Mm-hmm. Because that would be fascinating to me he to is. see him in Denver. I mean, this guy was when I you talk about Oregon, I talk about Iowa, Cody, Tory Taylor is one of the most ridiculous weapons on special teams I've ever seen to be able to pin teams deep when you were when with Iowa to say they struggle offensively is the understatement of of the the century because Tory Taylor was able to pin teams deep and Iowa was able to win these defensive battles so when you're talking about breaking in a rookie quarterback or having Jarrett Stidham start how important is that field position battle Tory Taylor can flip the field. He can pin teams deep. He's somebody who's going to be a huge asset to your special teams right away. So I think maybe here at pick number 207, you might be getting the best special teams player in the entire draft. I'm, I'm kind of with that, right? Because then you bring him in to compete, obviously, with Riley Dixon, who Riley had a pretty good season last year in Denver. But you're always going to have to look at your options going forward. Can Denver improve their long-term Let's go. Let's just shake it up. Let's cause chaos here on this mock draft Monday episode of Lockdown Broncos with the 207th overall pick in this 2024 NFL mock draft simulation. The Broncos, they're going to go Tory Taylor punter out of Iowa. And Sarah, that will conclude obviously all the picks that we have here for the Denver Broncos. And really, just to recap, I think this mock draft, I kind of like the way that it flowed here overall because Denver, obviously, initially being on the board, number 12th overall had a trade offer from the Tennessee Titans, had some offers from some other teams here. Tennessee's was the most fruitful because they get the 23rd pick, they get the 38th pick, and they get a 2025 first rounder from Tennessee where you're in that division with the Houston Texans. I kind of like the chances of where Denver maybe could end up with an additional first round pick in 2025. We talk about maximizing their window here. Denver gets Bo Nix, Denver gets Byron Murphy, 38th overall. And then Jalen Wright, 121st overall, running back out of Tennessee. Theo Johnson, tight end out of Penn State, 136th overall. Luke McCaffrey at 145th. Safety, Evan Williams out of Oregon, 147th. And then you get Jordan McGee, linebacker out of Temple, and Torrey Taylor, punter out of Iowa, 203rd and 207th overall. Sarah, if you had to give this a quick grade on today's Mock Draft Monday simulation, where would you be landing here? I'd be giving this an A plus, Cody. Obviously, you get the quarterback that you like, Bo Nix. You get a first round caliber prospect in Byron Murphy, and you add a 2025 first round pick. I mean, if that was all that you did in this draft, I think it's worth an A plus just because of the process, the way that you went about it. I really love this draft balance from top to bottom. We we didn't really double dip at any positions like we typically do when we have a mock draft together. So I like that we kind of had a little more balance in this one. I like that we kind of were intentional at each turn. It's like, hey, what does Jalen Wright do for the rookie quarterback? What does Theo Johnson and Luke McCaffrey do for your rookie quarterback? How does Jordan McGee, Evan Williams, Torrey Taylor, they upgrade your special teams right away. So just intentionality with upgrading areas to raise the floor for this team in 2024 and get instant contributors out of the rookie class. I think that's maybe the most important thing to me is getting guys that will play right away. The Broncos country, we want to know your thoughts on today's Mock Draft Monday simulation, what you thought of it. Make sure you let us know if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening, wherever you get your podcast. Tell us what you think. What grade would you give this Mock Draft here as we conclude Mock Draft Monday and it puts us one step closer toward the NFL Draft. That'll wrap up today's episode. Lockdown Broncos, real quick. Broncos country, thank you once again for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day every single day. Sarah Bettinger, myself, tomorrow's episode of the show. We're going to start taking a look at breakout players for 2024 on Denver's offense that could include on the offensive side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball, Broncos country sent in their suggestions. We'll break it all down on tomorrow's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos.